Dear Heavenly Father, we're coming to you in the name of Jesus. We want to just thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to come together on your Sabbath day, Lord God. The day you said to have a holy convocation so we can learn more about you. And as your word goes forth, Heavenly Father, give us understanding, Lord God, not just understand your word, Heavenly Father, but also to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. The title of today's, the title of today's lesson is, Does Being Under the Law Mean to Be Obedient to the Law? God forbid. Does being, does being under the law mean to be obedient to the law? God forbid. And as we do every Sabbath day, we're going to read Psalms 119 to 165 to 176. And I'll go more in depth into the lesson. Psalms 119, 165 to 176. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Lord, I have hope for thy salvation, and done thy commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. Let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. Let my supplications come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Let thy hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and the law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise thee. Let thy judgment help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. Amen. So dealing with the lesson again, the title, Does being under the law mean to be obedient to the law? God forbid. Because any time, like I said, cause, you know, when, when I talk to people about being obedient to the commandments of God, they say, well, look, I'm not under the law. Like, they, 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 they say that in reference or insinuating that if you're under the law, because they'll tell you that the law is done away with, the law is nailed to the cross, we no longer have to keep the law anymore, we, we just got to believe in Jesus and things like that. But my thing is, how can someone think to be under the law means to be obedient to the law? But as we go through this lesson, we're going to prove that when you're under the law, that means you're under the penalty of the law because we've all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that's why the Father sent a Savior, which is Jesus, so that he died for our sin because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of eternal life comes through Jesus Christ. So we're going to understand that just because we're not, yeah, we aren't under the law. And that law is dealing with the law of sin and death. We're going to also break that down as well to go through the lesson. So we're going to start this off in Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, 12 through 21. This is when sin entered into the world. Romans chapter 5, 12 through 21. Romans chapter 5, 12 through 21. And when you get there, go ahead. Wherefore, as by one man sin, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, mm -hmm. and so death passed upon all men, for they all have sinned. Right, so we all have sinned. Like I said, the only person that ever walked this earth that didn't sin was Jesus. Because remember, because even um, when David was saying his prayer after he um, committed that, you know, that sin with um, Uriah, uh, sending him into uh, combat, um, but she was husband. He made this statement as well in Psalms 51, where he says, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin. Did my mother conceive me? So remember, we were all we were born into this sinful well, world. But the only one who wasn't born in, uh, that didn't have sin come into the world was Jesus. Because remember, he wasn't he didn't come he didn't come uh, his birth didn't come to, come through by man. He came through uh, through the word of God. So that's why, like I say, so he didn't have any sin in him. So remember, Christ was the only one who never sinned. The only man that ever walked through who never sinned. But everyone else, we've all sinned and come short of glory of God. Go ahead. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Right, because sin is not credited when there is no law. Go ahead. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come, mm -hmm. but not as the offense. So also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Yes. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. Right, so that so even though how so that we all die because of sin, because of Adam's sin, now we all have that free gift of salvation which comes through grace, which 
uh, through Jesus Christ. Go ahead. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is by is of many offenses unto justification. Mm -hmm. For by one man's offense death reigned by one, and much more, and see much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Jesus Christ. Yes. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, mm -hmm. even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of the life. Right, because when you read in, um, in Romans chapter 5, verse 9, well, I'll read it verse 8. It says, But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Me, he says, much more than being now justified by his blood, he said, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. So that's why. So we're justified by the blood of Jesus. Go ahead. For it's by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Mm -hmm. So by the disobedience of one. Obedience. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. So by the obedience of one mm -hmm. shall many be made righteous. Yes. Moreover, the law entered and the offense might, that the offense might abound. By where sin, but where sin abounded, mm -hmm. grace did much more abound. Yes. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 So now let's go ahead and go to Genesis chapter three and see where it all started. How, how when um, sin entered into the world. Genesis chapter three. Genesis chapter three, one through nineteen. Genesis chapter 3, 1 through 19. Now we're going to see when sin came into the world right here. Genesis 3, 1 through 19. When you get there, go ahead. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Right, because you got some people who believe that this serpent was like a literal uh, talking snake, like, People really think that snakes can actually talk, but we understand when you read Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, who that serpent is. He was the one that was in the Garden of Eden. Revelation 12 and 9, it says, And the dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So we're seeing that right here, that that, that, that serpent was uh was Satan and also you can also see in um, Ezekiel chapter twenty eight. Because remember a cherub is an angel and that's what Satan was. He was a cherub angel. We're gonna see Ezekiel chapter twenty eight verse thirteen where it says Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering the the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald and the carbuncle and gold, the workmanship of the tablets of the pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. And thou was upon the holy mountain, thou hast walked up and down the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in all thy ways from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. See, so a sin was found in Satan. Because you gotta understand, angels also have to keep the commandments in heaven as well. It wasn't like because remember, God's, God's commandments are eternal. Because you can see in, um, in Psalms 103, in Psalms 103, verse 20, Psalms 103, verse 20 says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. So we see that Satan and the third of his angels, they weren't keeping the commandments of God. That's how sin was found in them in heaven. But well, we see he got kicked out of heaven and that Satan was that serpent that was in the Garden of Eden. And he's the one that influenced Adam and Eve to, uh, to sin against God. But go ahead. I just want to let you know because some people really believe it was actually a talking snake. But go ahead. Uh, verse two. Yes, verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, mm -hmm. neither shall you touch it, lest... He died. Mm -hmm. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, 
and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Mm. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, mm -hmm. and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. You remember, so it wasn't something, it wasn't a literal food. Remember, she, she took the conversation to her husband, because that's what it was. So, can you remember what they ate from the fruit of? Um, uh, I think it's, let me see, Hosea, Hosea 10, 13. Hosea 10 and 13. This is what they ate for the fruit of. It says, Ye have plowed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies. Because thou didst trust, he said, Thou didst trust in thy way in the multitude of thy mighty men. So you see, that fruit of knowledge of good and evil, that was the fruit of lies. And who was the and who was the father of lies? Well, you can read that in, you can read that in uh, John 8:44. John 8:44. John 8, 44, it says, right here, it says, Ye are of the father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. And when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So you see, he was the father of lies, and she ate from the fruit of lies, which was conversation with Satan. Go ahead. Tree of, the tree of life was Jesus, the and then the life. tree of knowledge of good and evil was Satan. Yeah. So then, when, um, were the rest of those trees supposed to be? Just regular trees. Of God no, no, no. Just regular, just trees. regular trees. Yeah, just and regular then trees. The um, tree of knowledge um, of good and evil was the devil's tree, so God knew that he was looking around there. Why did he get um, taken out? No, that wasn't his plan. Dude. That wasn't his plan. Remember, Jesus was the uh, he was a sacrificial lamb. This uh. He was the sacrificial lamb. When you read in Revelation 13, 8, he was the sacrificial lamb before the salvation, before the foundation of the world. He knew that he had to die for the sins of the world before the world was even created. So he knew that that was going to happen. When you read Isaiah chapter 46 and 10, he said that he called the end from the beginning. So remember, he knew that was going to happen anyway. So there was no need for him to kick him out because that was God's plan for him to do that. Look at this right here, Genesis 2 and 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord... God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. And then you see a semicolon. The tree of life is also in the midst of the garden. That was Jesus. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That was Satan. So those were the, there. So when Adam was there, Adam was constantly communing with Jesus, the tree of life. That's how he kept living. But as soon as that conversation was spoken with Eve to uh, Satan and brought that conversation back to Adam, then that's when man died because of sin. They didn't have that, baby. They didn't have Dead Sea Scrolls. No. Okay, Adam and so Eve didn't have that. Who was what? sharing the um, knowledge of Jesus if the tree, um, if all the other. Well, you know, Moses wrote the first five books. So Moses wrote this. So, okay. yeah, so Genesis through, uh, so from Genesis to De Deuteronomy, that's Moses writing that. So God told Moses everything that happened with Adam and Eve and with Noah and with Abraham and with Joe, all of that. Yeah, so God told Moses those things. Let's go now. Oh, well, I see. oh okay. Oh, yeah. There you go, bingo. He said he was, uh, in Judas, Judas uh, was made there you go. to betray him. Like, he, he already was destined for, exactly. uh, to do that because God already had a plan that. Uh, mm -hmm. Exactly, pretty good. Yeah, so Jesus already knew that he had to die for the sins of the world. When, um, like I said, Revelation 13 and 8, where he says, Revelation 13 and 8, where it says that, uh, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. See, so he was already going to die. You know what I'm saying? Like that, he, Jesus already knew that he had to die when, when that already happened. He knew he had to be the one to step in and, and, and to save mankind from their sin because remember, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of eternal life comes from Jesus Christ. So all the ones that died under the first covenant that, that believed in God, Jesus also restored them as well. Yes, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. All right, go ahead. Where you go? 
Okay, Genesis 3 and 7. Okay. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Mm -hmm. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden of the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Mm. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? So he ate from that, 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 that fruit of lies. Go ahead. Speaking of Satan. Go ahead. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Or deceived me. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. And sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, mm. curses the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, mm. and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread. Thou Till thou return unto the ground. Mm -hmm. For out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art, and into dust shalt thou return. Right, so when we die, we go right back to the ground. Right, so you go you go look in some people, some tombs, or coffins that have been there for, for hundreds of years, or whatever like that, you go in there, it's nothing but dust in there, because that's where we are. Remember, we're made from the dust of the ground. Go ahead. And Adam called. No, oh. no, that was it. That was it. That was, I have a question. Um, go ahead. You know how God. Yeah, so they're already made. So then, during, um, during the Remember, he made man on the sixth day. So angels, they were already created. Remember, Satan was already, remember, he was already, Satan, the angels, they were already created. It was already a war in heaven already at that time. So, so then, man was created on the sixth day. Go ahead. So then, was that the, um, so when God, um, okay. It's okay, right? It's okay. Because Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So, like, the, the God was trying, okay, the devil was trying to take over God's job. And um, God, um, the devil said, I'll give you all the diamonds and jewels and stuff you want. God said, I don't you want. You talking when Jesus was here on earth, you mean? Uh -huh. He was trying to tempt him. So, God, oh. said, God said, I don't want any of that. I just want to um, have people. He said, yeah, man should, he said, man should not live by bread alone, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yeah, yeah. that's when, that's when, that's when he was. Praying for those forty days and forty nights when the devil was trying to tempt him, though. But yeah, but the devil was in the garden though with with Jesus. That's 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 the main thing. And she wants to know about when um when the war about the war in heaven and how Satan um took over. And then why? Um, right here, Revelation chapter twelve. Revelation chapter twelve. We about to go ahead and get back to the Revelation chapter twelve because dealing with something else. With De um, Revelation chapter twelve, starting right here. Um, Revelation 12, verse 7, it says, And there was a war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place any more found in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. See, so they were cast out with him. And it says right here, um, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strengthen the kingdom of our God in the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So he's cast down to earth, 
And he's here to deceive all mankind. So that was still magic that when he was in Garden of Eden. Yeah, when he was in Garden of Eden, he was already kicked out. Yeah, he was already kicked out there. So then how did he sneak back in? He sneak back in where? Like when God created the Garden of Eden. He didn't sneak back in there. He was already remember he was already cast out to the earth. He got kicked out. Yeah, he got kicked out. Yeah, he got kicked out. That's what yeah, he got kicked out to the earth. Let's go okay. No, no, not Lake of Fire. No, no, the Lake of Fire don't come until the end. The end, yeah. Re uh, Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, 1 through 16. Yeah, we'll go more over it um, after the lesson. We can talk more about that again. We can get the lesson over yet. That's that's definitely something that, you know, because I, I think that when, you know, when you're looking at man, you know, like when, because um, remember he when he created man in uh, Psalms chapter 8, In Psalms chapter 8, when it talks about Psalms chapter 8, verse 4, it says, What is man? Thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visited him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and, how, and he said, And thou hast crowned him with the glory and honor. Thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, and thou put all things under his feet. So when I'm looking at that, I'm thinking like when maybe when Satan saw that God was making man in his image like that, he's like, Hold up. Like, I'm thinking that maybe because when they're asking who. These are the angels saying, like, like these are the angels, what is man, and thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou hast visited them. So I'm thinking that maybe you probably saw, like, hold on, and you're making this man, and here I am, I'm up here in God, I'm, I'm up here with you, huh? You said, I've been here. Yeah, I've been here. we got to uh, uh, be subservient to these to these uh, humans that you're making in your image. I believe that that could have probably been the fall of what happened. But I don't know, because, you know, it's a mystery, you know what I'm saying, like that, because the Bible does say this, it's a mystery. We'll know, I'm sure, that when we, you know, get to the kingdom, but he says this right here. In Deuteronomy 29 and 29. In Deuteronomy 29, 29, where he says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those, he said, But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to the, our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. So, but I, I, I'm thinking like that's probably what that was when he saw that man and then he got kicked out. But obviously, they broke and transgressed the laws because remember, angels also had laws as well. Let's go now to uh, Romans 2. Romans 2, 1 through 16. Romans chapter 2, 1 through 16. Romans chapter 2, 1 through 16. Let me get there. Go ahead. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges, mm -hmm. for wherein thou judges another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judges doest the same thing. Right, because remember, we're not supposed to judge anyone. You know, that's that's not our duty as far as believers. We're supposed to minister the word of God to them. That's why in uh, James chapter 4, verse 11 says, Speak not evil of one another, brethren. And he that speaketh evil of his brethren and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law and judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who was able to save and to destroy who art thou thou judges another? So we should never, but see, we're not judging anyone when we're telling, it's the difference from, from us judging someone and then us giving the word to someone. Because God says, keep the Sabbath day. Or God says, don't eat these foods. We're showing them what God says. So we're not, and if they're not doing these things, who's judging them? Is it us that's judging them or is that God judging them? God. There you go, right. So we don't, yeah, there you go, exactly. Go ahead. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth mm -hmm. against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man that judges them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. Mm -hmm. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Yes, the goodness of God leads to repentance. Because now we don't want to do those evil acts. Now we want to serve God with love and truth. Go ahead. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart mm -hmm. treasures up the, unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, mm -hmm. who will render to every man according to his deeds, mm. to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. Yes. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth. Our contentious are self-seeking. Mm -hmm. But obey unrighteousness, yes. indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil mm -hmm. of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. Yes. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. 
for there is no respected person with God. Mm -hmm. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. Mm -hmm. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Mm -hmm. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So look, so when you're reading this right here, it says, For as many have sinned, verse 12, For as many have sinned without the law shall perish also without law. And as many as sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. So the ones that have the law, like us, we have the Bible. We're reading the Bible. We're going to be judged by what's written in the Bible because that's what, because we actually have the Bible. So God's going to judge the court into what we have because we can't tell God, well, we didn't really know anything about it when we have the Bible in our presence. So that's why he said we're going to be just. That's why he says right here in 13, for not the hearers of the law, are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified, meaning that since we have the law of God, there's no excuse for us not to be able to keep the law of God, so therefore God's going to judge us according to what his word is. But look at verse um, 14, though. Go ahead. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, mm -hmm. do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law unto themselves. Right, so example, so remember when Paul is writing this, Paul is writing this around you know, 50, 50, 60 AD or so. So now you have people that never even heard the, the gospel, like like people in America, South America, places like that, these islands of the sea, they never heard the gospel at this time when he's saying. So now the ones that never heard the gospel, this is what he's telling you, or, or the law of God, he says, for when Gentiles which have not the law do by the things contained in the law, these having not the law are law to themselves. So you might have some people who never heard the law of God but don't lie. But don't steal. But you know, will not kill anyone. Will not cheat on their spouse. Like they're gonna do those things that's contained in the law. But even though they didn't have the law within themselves, they still were doing those things. So God's gonna judge them accordingly. Like, okay, well, when you were over there, you weren't as bad as the rest of your village. Like, like out of, out of 100 people in your village, it might have been maybe three or four of them that weren't doing those. Things. You know, it's always a remnant that weren't doing those things. He's gonna spare them. So on Judgment Day, God knows that if the gospel would have been given to them. They'd have received it, repented, and then followed him. But the other ones who were just doing those heinous and evil acts, he understood. Like, these guys, you guys weren't going to change anyway. That's what, he, that's what he's talking about right here. So look at verse um, 15. Go ahead. Which show the work of the law written in their hearts. Yes. Their conscience also bearing witness in their thoughts, the mean, while accusing or else excusing one another. Mm -hmm. In the day when God judged the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Amen. Amen. So you got to see. So remember, it's, it's the ones that, well, see, like right now, though, because, you know, he says this and, um, because, you know, at the time, you know, God winked at that, you know, at the time, you know, right here, um, when people didn't really have the word of God. But now, when and Paul was in uh, Mars Hill in Athens in Acts 17, he says right here, um, Acts 17 and 30 says, And at the time of this ignorance, God winked at, but now command all men everywhere to repent, because he had appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom hath ordained. Wherefore, he had given assurance to all men, he hath raised him from the dead. So now, you know, even though when, like Paul is doing this, so now this gospel has gone out through the whole entire world. So it's going to be, so that a lot of people, can't say, especially living in our lifetime, they say, well, I didn't know anything about the law. Like, trust me, you know about it, but it's just that you choose, you chose to continue to follow in your God or to be agnostic, atheist, whatever it is. But the thing about it is they won't have an excuse now because the gospel has really gone out, you know what I'm saying, to everyone. So they can't say, well, I didn't know anything about that. No, you, you heard about it, you just didn't want to do it. That's what that is. So now, let's go ahead and go to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Romans 3, 9 through 31. Romans chapter 3, 9 through 31. Romans 3, 9 through 31. When you get there, go ahead. Romans chapter 3, 9 through 31. Go ahead. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they... Are all under sin. So he's asking, he says, that's why he's asking that question. What then? Are we better than they? No. The reason why he's asking, because look at verse 1. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit of their circumcision? Much in every way, chiefly because 
that unto them were committed the oracles of God. So remember, God gave us, the children of Israel, he gave us the word of God. But, but our duty, as far as him, as far as giving us the word of God, we're supposed to teach all nations about our God. But he's asking, does that mean that we're better than them? No. For we've all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we can't say that we're better than Gentiles because we've all sinned. So that's what he was letting them know. But the advantage is that God did give us the word of God, but we're supposed to teach the nation. We're supposed to be a light unto the Gentiles to bring them into our God. That's what, that's what that means. So go ahead. Verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous. There you go. No, not one. Mm -hmm. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after, after God. They are all gone out of the way. Mm -hmm. they, are all, they are together become unprofitable. Mm -hmm. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Mm -hmm. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues, they have used to see. Mm -hmm. The poison of ass is under their lips. Yeah. Their, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Mm. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Mm. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Mm -hmm. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law. Okay, so now we know that what the, he says, what things saith, he said things soever the law saith, it says to them who are under the law. So we're going to see who was under the law. Go ahead. That every mouth may be stopped, and all the world. No, just some. All the world. Well, most. All the oh, world. Oh, just a little bit. All the world. Oh, all the world what? may become guilty before God. Because why? We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So therefore, we are all condemned and we are all under the law and under the penalty for breaking God's law. That's what he's saying. And this is why he says this in verse 20. Go ahead. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Yes. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So therefore, that's why I say the law cannot justify you because if we've already broken the law, how? Because remember, justification means to be cleared from guilt. Only the blood of Jesus was able to wipe us away and clear us from guilt. The law can't do that because why? We've already broken it. So therefore, we can't be justified by it. That's why we need Jesus. But go ahead. Verse 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. Yes. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. Unto all and upon all of them that believe. Mm -hmm. But there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. See, so we've all sinned. So that's why we cannot be justified by the law. And that's why the whole world is guilty for breaking God's law. Go ahead. Being justified freely by his grace. Not the law? No, by grace. his grace. There you go. By his grace through his blood. Mm -hmm. Through the redemption mm -hmm. that is in Christ Jesus. Yes. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith. In his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, that this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him that is that which believe, believeth in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Where is boasting then? Is it excluded? By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith, without the deeds of the law. Mm -hmm. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Right, because God, he's the God of the whole world, the whole universe. Go ahead. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith mm -hmm. and uncircumcision through faith, Yes. do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. So our faith in Jesus Christ is what established the same thing with uh, Abraham. Remember with Abraham in uh, Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. Remember, Abraham believed God first. That's why he says, and he believed in the Lord. And it was, he said, he was counted to him for righteousness because he believed him. But we also got to understand that what also Abraham did in uh, uh, Genesis chapter 26, verse 5, where it says, because that Abraham obeyed my voice, he kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. He was also obedient to them. Because he also, because you know, Paul says this in Romans chapter 10, verse 7. Because how can you have faith in a God whom you don't know about? That's why Romans 10, verse 17 says, So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. How can you have faith in a God you don't know about? Unless 
you get into his word and know about God. So that's why people try to say, I know I was talking to the Gentile yesterday. He's talking about, yeah, you know, I know a lot of people who, who believe, who have faith in God and never opened up a Bible a day in their lives. I said, well, God, they serve in it. And I said, because how, 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 how do they know that God when the Bible says faith comes by hearing, by hearing by the word of God? He's talking about, oh, that's rubbish. We don't need that. Uh, we, we already know what's right and wrong anyway. Like, we, we don't need a Bible to tell us what's right and wrong. Which is not true because the Bible says that for when we just read God that. God breaks down more stuff than just than what's just right and wrong. Because there's also dietary laws, um, mm -hmm. like days that you need to keep certain things you can eat certain days and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It's not really. It's not only a book of like. It's not the U.S. government mm -hmm. rule book. It's this. It's, it's a book for us. There you, yeah, the story like, exactly. It's, it's go ahead. Explaining stories and showing more there you go. stories and why we have to do certain Praise things. God. Not just um, laws or books as it's examples and everything government. it's examples mm -hmm. and if, if you want to if you really want to look anywhere up you go to the bible there you go not the dictionary because mm -hmm. the dictionary probably has a more twisted well that's still that's, that's dealing with worldly yeah, we, when we talk about like, dealing with god we go to his bible though dictionary dealing with words you need a dictionary to understand you know words of vocabulary in the language that we're speaking in english but i'm talking about as far as dealing with our salvation and knowing who god is though we have a dictionary yeah that, that that's that's totally that's but that's like, Yeah, but right here, it says that for the law is the knowledge of sin. Remember, without without the law, we won't know what sin is. We will not know what sin is. Where are we at now? At verse, um, we're done? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go to uh, Romans 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, 1 through 23. Romans chapter 6. 1 through 23, because see, a lot of people like to come here and try to say that, you know, I'm under grace, I'm not under the law, so therefore I don't have to keep the law. That's not what that's not what Paul is saying right here at all. But people run here, especially to this chapter, to try to circumvent the law and not try to keep the law. When we just read in Romans chapter 3, verse 31, the, um, that our faith in Jesus helps us establish the law. But go ahead, verse Romans 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Mm -hmm. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. God forbid. Mm -hmm. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? There you go. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, uh, were baptized into his death. Therefore we were buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Mm -hmm. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall all be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Yes. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, mm -hmm. that henceforth we should not serve sin. Mm. For he that is dead is free from sin. And what is sin? First John 3, 4. For sin is the transgression. Of the law, so it's letting you know. So when people try to say it, I'm no longer under the law, I'm under grace. You're right, but being under the law does not mean that you don't have to keep the law of God either. It just means that you're under the penalty of breaking the law. Go ahead. Oh, I was about to uh, ask you because it's like the transgress this transgression means, it means to break. Yeah. Like to break yeah, you go. Yeah. Not there you go. Exactly. That's exactly what it means. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. Mm-hmm. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. Mm -hmm. For in that he died, he died into sin, unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Yes. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, mm -hmm. but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, yes. that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Mm -hmm. Neither yield ye your members as instruments unto unrighteousness, unto sin, mm. but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Yes. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. See, folks will quote this verse right here, and then, and then leave the whole chapter alone. So they'll say, uh, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. But they're thinking that being that 
you're not under law means that I don't have to keep the law anymore. Like that's how they're looking at it. So that's why he clarifies it in verse 15. But people love to read verse 14 and, and skip verse 15. What does verse 15 say? What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. God forbid. Right, God forbid. That doesn't mean that just because we're no longer under the law. But what law? But like I said, we'll get more clarification in the very next chapter. What law he's talking about? Because he's not talking about the law of God. He's talking about the law of sin and death. We're going to break that down in the very next chapter. But go ahead. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself service to obey? Mm -hmm. His servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death. Right, or, it says, right, sin unto death or? Or of obedience unto righteousness. Or obedience unto righteousness. Go ahead, because remember, um, Deuteronomy 6, 24 and 25. Deuteronomy 6, 24 and 25 says, And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he had commanded us. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse, verse 12. Remember he says, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now Israel... What doeth the Lord thy God require of thee, but to fear the Lord our, thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord, and the statutes which I command thee this day for thy good. So that's why he's so letting you know. So we got to be obedient unto our obedience unto righteousness. Verse 17. But God be thanked. That you were the servants of sin. Right, because so before we knew Christ, before we knew Jesus, we were servants of sin, meaning that we were walking in sinful nature because we were no longer, because uh, we were new creatures in Christ. But the Bible says, for any man be in Christ, you become a new creature. Things of old have passed away. Behold, all things are new. So now that we're in Christ, we're no longer servants or slaves to sin. But what? But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine yes. which was delivered you, being then made free from sin. You became the servants of righteousness. Now we became servants of righteousness, meaning that we, we believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and we're keeping the commandments. Go ahead. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Yes. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity. Yes. Even so now yield your members servants to, to righteousness, unto holiness. And what is iniquity? Remember, remember iniquity, huh? Praise God. Exactly. Right, right. Remember... Because remember, John quoted, you know, remember John was a, uh, you know, John was a law keeper, a law teacher. So remember, he said that for sin is transgression of the law. But he also understood what sin was because Leviticus chapter 5 verse 17 says this. And if any soul sin and commit any of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandments of the Lord, though he wist not, yet he is guilty, he shall bear his iniquity. Right, his sin. Go ahead. But when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. Yes. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Yes. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness mm -hmm. and the end everlasting life. Yes. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. He says right here, so 22, he says, but now being free from sin and become servants of God, become servants to God, ye have your fruit, he says, ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end thereof everlasting life. So look at this. So remember how do we, remember what uh, he said in Psalms chapter, um, Psalms verse 1? It said, Psalm verse 1, Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, as his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So we see we are only, we're only able to produce good fruit by what? Keeping the commandments of God and also believing in Jesus. Yes. Well, that, that, well, that was it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's go ahead and go to Romans chapter 7, very next chapter. Romans 7. 1 through 25. Because see, this, this is going to really break it down to prove that how God, how Paul was letting you know what law that we're no longer under. You know, it's not talking about the law of God. It's, he's going to point it out, the law that we're under, and that, and that, uh, and that why we need Jesus. Go ahead. Uh, Romans 7, verse 1. Know ye not, brother, for I speak to them 
that know the law, how that the law have dominion over a man as long as he liveth? For the woman which hath a, a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. Yes. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. Right. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, mm -hmm. though she be married to another man. Yes. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, mm -hmm. that ye should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Mm -hmm. For when we are in the flesh of the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Right. The works of the law. Why? Because they were breaking and transgressing the law. So therefore you're bringing fruit unto damnation, not fruit unto life, which means to be obedient and to keep the commandments of God. Because we just read that in Psalms 1. Go ahead. But now we are delivered from the law, mm -hmm. that being dead wherein we were held, yes. that we should serve in newness of spirit. And not in the oldness of the letter. Right. So people are going to look. So people will read this. Verse 6. But now we are delivered from the law. That being dead we're in. That we were held. That we should serve in newness of spirit. And not in the oldness of the letter. Meaning that see. We don't have to read that Old Testament anymore. Now we're walking in the newness of the spirit. But we're going to trust me. We're going to see what law was Paul referring to. Because he was not referring to the law of God. Because that will be crazy. Because he's constantly telling you. He was saying, uh, flee from sin, flee from sin. And what is sin? Sin is transgression of the law. So we're going to let you know what law he was talking about that we're no longer under anymore. Go ahead, verse 7. What then? What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. You got folks that say that. You got some folks that say that the, the law of God is sin, which is crazy. But go ahead. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. Mm -hmm. For I had not known lust except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Well, we can find that in the Ten Commandments. Go ahead. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, mm -hmm. which for That means covetous desires. That's what that means, covetous desires. Go ahead. For without the law, sin was dead. Yes. For I was alive without the law once, mm -hmm. but when the commandment came, I, sin revived and I died. Yes. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, I found to be Unto death. Remember, he said the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. Because remember, the law gives life. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. My son, keep my words, lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live in the law, the apple of thy eye. So remember, keeping the commandments, keeping the law, that brings life. He also says the same thing in Deuteronomy chapter 30. Because people run here and they think that he's talking about the law of God and he's not. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15. He says, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil, and that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God and to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land where thou goest to possess it. So see, when we're keeping the commandments of God, we're walking in the blessings and we're also living. But when we're not keeping it, we're walking under the curses and we're walking to death when we're being disobedient to God. Where are we at? Verse what? Eleven. Eleven. Go ahead. Now watch this. For sin taken occasion by the commandment mm -hmm. deceived me, and by it slew me. Now well, how is the law? What does the law say? For wherefore the law is holy. Yes. And the commandment holy. Yes. And just and good. So if the, if the law is holy and the commandments are holy, just and good, why should we not keep these things? You know, so like it's clearly letting you know. But look at verse thirteen. Was then. That which is good made death unto me. God forbid. Right, God forbid. Of course not. Like, how can the law this? How can the law be holy, just, and good, yet be it? You know, what I'm saying be made death unto me. That's why it says, God forbid. But what? But seeing that it might appear sin, mm -hmm. working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. Yes. For we know that the law is spiritual. Yes. But I am carnal, so under. I'm sorry, carnal, sold under sin. Yes. For that which I do, I allow not. Yes. For what I would, that I do not. Yes. But what I hate, that I that do I. Because he's constantly struggling with the flesh because the flesh wants to 
do sinful nature. So he's constantly battling because Jesus also said, for the spirit of willing but the flesh is weak. It's like you want to do good, but sin is ever present. You know, it's like that. So he's like, so what am I supposed to do? That's why he says what? Verse 16. If then I do that which I would not, uh -huh. I consent unto the law that is that it is good. Yes. Now then, it is no more I that do it, mm -hmm. but sin that dwells in me. But the sin that dwells in me. Go ahead. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me. Yes. But how to perform that which is good I find not. Mm -hmm. For the good that I would I do not. Yes. But the evil which I would not that I do. Because he's like that. He said like I know God is telling me I don't need to be doing this. I need to be, I need to, you know keep his commandments but every time but this flesh is constantly drawing me away from God. That's what he's, he's telling him no. But he's going to tell you what that law is. He goes, it's, it's another law but it's not the law of God. He's going to explain it to you. Go ahead. Now if I do that I would not Mm -hmm. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwell within me. Go ahead. I find thee in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. He says, so I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Because what? For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So Paul said he delights after the law of God after this inward man. So after his spirit, he delights in the law of God. He's telling you he delights in the law of God, but what? But I see another law in my members mm -hmm. warring against the mind, the law of my mind, and bringing me unto captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. See, the law of sin now. So now he's letting you know it's, a, it's another law that he's constantly battling. He ain't battling. Like I said, he's not saying that he's no longer keeping the law of God. Death is constantly allowing me to not keep the law of God. Because even though I delight in the law of God, but this law of sin and death is constantly allowing me to do things contrary to the word of God. Go ahead. O oh, wretched man that I am, yes. who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Yes. I thank God for Sit Jesus down. Christ, Sit our down. Lord. So then with the mind, uh -huh. I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So when he's walking in the flesh, he's serving the law of sin and death. But when he's walking in his spirit, that means he's keeping the law of God. So now we're going to see the very, um, okay, before we get, before we go to Romans 8, let's go to, uh, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, 15 through 22. 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 When you get there, go ahead. Brother, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be a man's covenant, Though it be but a man's covenant, uh -huh. yet, if it be confirmed, no man disannoweth, yes. or add it thereto. Uh -huh. Now to Abraham and his seed were the pr promises made. Yes. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, uh -huh. but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Yes. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after, Cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. So remember, so the law came 430 years after Abraham. Because remember, 430 years. Remember, how long were we in Egypt? When you read in Exodus chapter 12, how long were we in Egypt? Um, uh, Exodus chapter 12, verse 40. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. So, so when Abraham, when you read Abraham, uh, Genesis chapter 15, Abraham has a vision showing that the children of Israel were going to be in a land in captivity for over 400 years, which was Egypt. So now when we see the law, because we just read, remember, uh, we, just read, we just read in uh, Genesis chapter 26, verse 5, that Abraham kept the law. However, it was oral before then. That's why 430 years later when Moses came, that's when God wrote the law down on stone, on paper. So it was written down then, but Prior to that, it was oral. That's, that's what he's letting you know. So the law came 430 years after Abraham, which was written down by Moses. But go ahead. For if the inheritance be of the law, uh -huh. it is no more a promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Remember, he gave that to Abraham by promise. He told Abraham, because since you believed in me, therefore all the nations of the earth will be blessed through you, Abraham. But we also know Abraham obeyed God. But when he first met God, believe. 
he believed God. That's why he said it was counted to him as righteous, as we read in uh, Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. Now look at verse 19. Go ahead. Wherefore then, serveth the law? Uh-huh. It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. So therefore, so a lot of people will read this passage right here, and they'll think it's talking about the law of animal sacrifice. Which has nothing. The law of animal sacrifice wasn't even in, was even in question or even the topic of discussion when they were talking about right here. When it says, "Wherefore then serveth the law," it was added because of transgression. What law was added because of sin? Remember, we read we read in uh, Romans chapter seven the law of sin and death. That was the that was the law that was added because of sin. Because remember, sin is a transgression of the law. So what was added? The law of sin and death because of, of breaking the law. Go ahead, verse twenty. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, mm -hmm. but God is one. Yes. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. Right. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Mm -hmm. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin. Yes. That the promise by faith of Christ Jesus, of Jesus Christ, might be given to them that believe. Right, so therefore, so if a person right here, so even if a person does try to keep the law, right, if a person tries to keep the law without believing in Jesus, now when they end up sinning, because the Bible says for the way, because the Bible says that um, in, uh, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, Hebrews 9, 22, where it says, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission or no forgiveness of sin. He says the same thing also in Leviticus chapter 17. When you read Leviticus chapter 17, Leviticus chapter 17, starting at verse 10. Leviticus 17 and verse 10. It says, And whosoever, he says, And whatsoever man there should be of the house of Israel, or the stranger that should among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood. And will cut him off from among the people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. So therefore, without the blood, there's no remission of sin. Meaning that blood had to be shed. So here it is, right here. He's telling them that, okay, even though, remember the law of animal sacrifice, about to pretty, when you pretty much read in, uh, in Galatians, Remember, the temple's about to be destroyed. So if you had these Judaizers who were so-called believing in Jesus Christ, whatever, and yet when they sin, how are you going to get atoned for your sin as soon as you sin? If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you can keep the law all you want. That doesn't mean anything because when you sin, the blood of bulls and goats were not able to take away uh, sin. Only the blood of Jesus could. But the point was in, in, in Galatians chapter 3 that when he says service of law, that law was talking about the law of sin and death, not the law of animal sacrifice. Well, go ahead. Finish it up. Finish it up. Where are we? Oh, verse, uh, read verse uh, 22. But the scripture has concluded all under sin mm -hmm. that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. See, so we have to believe in Jesus. Because remember, he's the, propos uh, the propitiation, or which means the sacrifice of atonement of our sins. If we don't have Jesus, it don't matter if you try to keep the law perfectly. Soon as we fail and fall, we deserve death. But therefore, now we're going to go ahead and read how Jesus freed us from that law of sin and death and that we're no longer un under condemnation when we happen to sin, when we're in Christ. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, 1 through 8. Romans chapter 8, 1 through 8. Romans chapter 8, 1 through 8. Let me get there. Go ahead. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So, all right. And so remember, what is the Spirit? Remember, the Spirit is talking about dealing with the Word of God. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23. Proverbs 1, 23. It says, Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my Spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. So when we're walking in the spirit, meaning that we're walking in the word of God, there's no condemnation. So when we happen to sin, when we're walking in the Lord, 
we're not condemned and just say, oh man, since you sinned, you're going straight to the lake of fire. No, that is, that's not what that is. So he's not telling them because we're not walking after the flesh. Remember the Bible says in Proverbs 24, 16, for a good man falls seven times, but get back up. But when the wicked fall, they fall into mischief, which means all types of evil. But go ahead, verse two. For the law of the spirit of yes. life mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. See, he made us free from the law of sin and death because that's the penalty of breaking the law. And that's how the whole world is under the law of sin and death because the whole world has broken the law. However, we're no longer under the law or the penalty of the sin and death because why? We believe in Jesus Christ. So therefore, we're not under condemnation like the whole world is who don't accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Go ahead, verse 3. For what the law could not do, mm -hmm. in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, mm -hmm. and for sin condemned <clears throat> sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who yes. walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Yeah, we're walking after the Spirit, we're walking after the Word of God. Mm -hmm. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Yes. But they that are after the Spirit things of the spirit yes for to be carnally minded is death mm -hmm. but to be spiritually minded is life and peace yes because the carnal mind is enmity against god yes for it is not subject to the law of god neither indeed can be mm -hmm. so then they that are in the spirit cannot please god but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit well yeah well, no well, you saw the verse eight. Oh, i'm sorry yeah right. yeah mm -hmm. right he says so they that are of the flesh cannot please God because when you're walking in the flesh and have a carnal mindset, that means that you are not subject to the laws of God because the person who loves the Lord won't say, okay, well, God says, you know, keep a Sabbath day, it's feast days, don't lie, don't steal on your mother and father. They won't say, I ain't got to do those things anymore. Uh-uh. A person who's walking in the Lord will say yes because that's what thus says the Lord because we can actually read it. Only a carnal mind and someone walking in the flesh will, will, uh, will despise the laws of God. Let's go now to Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes 12, 8 through 14. Ecclesiastes 12, 8 through 14. Ecclesiastes 12, 8 through 14. Now, this is the purpose of a preacher now. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, this is what a preacher is supposed to be telling the people that love God and that serve God. They're supposed to be telling them, like, look, we got to keep the commandments of God. We got to believe in Jesus Christ. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Go ahead. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 8 through 14. Go ahead. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. All is vanity. Yes. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. He still taught the people knowledge, yes. Yea, he gave good heed mm -hmm. and sought out and set in order many Proverbs. Yes. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. Yes. The words of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, mm -hmm. which are given from one shepherd. Yes. And further by these, my sons, be admonished of making many books. There is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Yes. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So you're going to say, what is the conclusion of the whole matter? Go ahead. Fear God and keep his commandments. Oh. For this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole duty. This is why God put us here on earth, is to fear him and to keep his commandments. And then what? For God shall bring every work into judgment yes. with every secret thing. Yes. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let's go now, one verse, James chapter 3, verse 1. James chapter 3, verse 1. One verse. James chapter 3, verse 1. James chapter 3, verse 1. When you get there, go ahead. My brother, be not many masters. Be not many masters, or it says, don't let, he says, or don't let many of you become teachers. Why? Knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. So therefore, right. So the ones, because everyone wants to be quick to be a pastor. It's like, look, all right, you better be watching out. You want to be a pastor now because we're going to see, I'm going to get judged more harshly than you guys because I'm supposed to be teaching you the word of God. So therefore, so you got a lot of people in these pulpits who are preaching saying you no longer have to keep the commandments of God. They have, boy, they got to, 
Well, I feel sorry for them on Judgment Day. That's why it says, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation because we're supposed to be teaching Jesus to you guys and keeping the commandments of God, not telling people you no longer got to keep the commandments anymore or pick and choose what commandments you can keep under the new covenant. So trust me, there's going to be a lot of, uh, there's going to be wrath on on, uh, on the day of uh, judgment. Go ahead. Yeah, um, a lot, a lot of No, they know, I believe they, yeah, no, I, I think they might know because they have the word of God, but it's just that because I think they might know because um, in, uh, in Romans chapter one, I'm not going to say all of them, you know what I'm saying, but some, some might become ignorant and, you know, God can reveal his truth to them and hopefully they can wake their eyes up. But this right here in Romans chapter one, verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and all unrighteousness of men. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that, he said, because that which is known by God is manifested in them, for God has shown it unto them. See, he shown it unto them, but yet they want it because, you know, well, you know, well, if we go back to the Sabbath and all kinds of stuff like that, folks probably ain't going to come to church anymore because, you know, we all come to church on Sunday. Or if I tell folks they can't eat this or no longer do Christmas and Easter, that's going to break a lot of people's hearts. So I'm just going to go along with it. And the pastors, be, they'll know, they'll know the word of God, but they'll go along with it because they don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. They got a problem, you know what I'm saying? Because he, now they're trying to please, that's why Paul says this in Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, where he says, um, For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be a servant of Christ. Because if I'm trying to worry about your feelings or how you're going to act, because, you know, if I, if I say we can't do this and do Christmas and Easter and all that, and now we got to do God's feast days, you guys are going to be mad. You guys are going to up and leave. Don't come here at the church anymore. Well, you got to preach the word of God, but that's why it says, hey, but if you're called to be a pastor, you're supposed to uh, preach the truth. We, that person going to be held accountable on the day of judgment. Last one, one verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Last one. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Because remember, we just read in, the, in the Ecclesiastes. We just read in Ecclesiastes, the last verse, last chapter. Where he says, verse 30, he says, verse uh Verse 13, let, he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment. And with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. We're going to see how Jesus is also going to judge us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. One verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. One verse. Go ahead. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Yes. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that. He has done, whether it be good or bad. Right, whether it be good or bad, or whether it be good or evil. So he's letting you know, we're going to be a judge according to this law, so that, so dealing with the lesson, does being under the law mean to be obedient to the law? God forbid. Being under the law means to be under the penalty of the law, which the law of sin and death. That's why we need Jesus, but we also have to keep the commandments of God, because what is a saint? Uh, according to God, not man's opinion. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saint. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. Amen.